Hello everybody, John Trotwell back here again with another video, and I'm here with my official review for The Flash Season 2, Episode 3, titled Family of Rogues. Now, of course, if you've not seen this episode, please go check it out, because this review may contain spoilers. But that being said, let's get into Family of Rogues. Now, obviously, based off the title, it's the return of the rogues. Not, of course, the complete rogues, but one of the rogues, or at least, I guess, two of the rogues, and you know, whatever. It's The point is, is that it's the family of the rogues, the so gallery of the Flash, which, of course, contains Captain Cold, the Golden Glider, and their father, played by the amazing Michael Ironside. Now, for me personally, this when I heard that this episode was happening, I had dread in my soul, because as much as I love the character of Captain Cold, and as much as I love the actor who portrays him on the flat on CW's The Flash, even with his, you know, like, his campiness and, like, his, like, overacting to a certain extent, as much as I appreciate that stuff, sometimes the rogues can, can become, can really become a nuisance on the CW Flash, because it's almost like its own subplots, like, you have the main bad guy storyline on the flash and then you have the 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 secondary storyline which is the with the which is the episodic um, villain of the week of the flash and then the third subplot is the rogues and as much as i like that kind of stuff it just comes off as like campy and stupid and they they just never the rogues on the show at least i mean like not discluding anything from the comic books but at least on the show they've never really done anything to, for me to really be overly, you know, excited that they're on the show. You know what I mean? Like, the, the rogues haven't really done anything on the show, at least, to really be, like, really amazing. And plus, after the way they kind of left off last season, it kind of made it feel like if the rogues were going to come back this season, they should have come back with a vengeance, you know? I mean, like, freaking, you know, snart, fucking let go all those metahumans out of that little chamber truck thing, and they went off back into Central City in their own separate ways, you know, like Weather Wizard and, you know, all those other wackadoos. So it would have been cool if, like, if this this season we were going to get another rogues gallery episode, it would have been cool to just, like, you know, Captain Code come back into Central City, like, set up a bomb or something, I don't know, and then just, like, unleash all the metas all throughout the city, and, like, it would have to take Flash to, like, try and stop them all. Kind of similar to how Episode 1 in that little, like, dream sequence kind of started off, except with a dozen, you know, rogues instead of just Heat Wave and Captain Cold. I think that would have been a cooler episode, but at the same time, I can understand where they were going with, and Mike Ironside unfortunately had the bad stick in this uh, episode where he was the villain of the week, which was sad and depressing. I was really excited that he was going to be a part of this episode, but when I found out that he was just the episode of the week and he was not going to be coming back for any future episodes, that's especially after the way you find out how he's ex executed uh, and exits the episode at the end of this um, story, it's just a downer in my know. I'm just saying, I'm just a huge Michael, Michael Ironside fan. I love his shit. His uh, scanners, come on, that was just badass. And of course, he's been a part of the DC Universe before. If you go back and watch, I think it's the episode titled uh, Legends of the Dark Knight, I think, um, back in the day from the animated series of Batman, there's an amazing section in that episode where all these kids were having segments and talking about Batman, and one of the kids has a Dark Knight Returns flashback, and it's uh, Bruce Tim and all those original creators for the animated series recreated Frank Miller's Dark Knight Returns, and Michael Ironside uh, with the um, uh, taking away uh, you know freaking the, the legend that is Kevin Conroy's uh, Batman voice, he replaced him for that segment, and he played the older, darker Batman from the Dark Knight Returns, and that was so freaking badass and all. Just uh, that's just a little tidbit of history that um you know Michael Ironside has had with the DC universe. But I'm just saying that was badass, and I was hoping they would have him come back for more stuff. But he's kind of just the father of. You know, the Snarts, he's, you know, obviously his father of Captain Cold, he's the father of Golden Glider. Golden Glider kind of comes in, like, very shoehorned in in this episode. I feel like her, the sole purpose of having Golden Glider in this episode, I feel like the only real reason they had her here was just so Cisco could have someone to kiss. As we all know, uh, they kind of, last season, they kind of set up this kind of tone of, like, there's something between them, sort of, kind of, whatever. For me... 
I don't really care. Like, I don't, I've never seen anything from Golden Glider, from her appearances last season, to really support that I want to see that kind of relationship flourish. I mean, I love Cisco. He's hands down one of my favorite characters on the show. His jokes, his quips, his fanboy gasms, they're hilarious. But his relationship with Golden Glider uninterests me to so many levels that I can't really, you know, continue to talk about fear of having dozens of Cisco fanboys trying to kill me inside. So I can't really talk to the depths that I want to. However, I'm just going to say it just doesn't serve a purpose. However, there is a relationship that's introduced that I really think could really go somewhere and does have a purpose. And that's, of course, Caitlin Snow and freaking Jay Garrick. Jay Garrick, um, there's a little side plot where Jay Garrick is obviously obviously trying to create at Star Labs of course trying to create a way to go back to Earth 2 that's his sole purpose with this whole season is that he came back uh, you know, he he went through the portal, he's in Earth 1, he tried to help out Barry, you know, do his thing, he told him about Zoom, now he feels like his job is done and he wants to leave, however, Caitlyn Snow doesn't want him to leave, she, you know, has like, this. she has a thing for him, there's some ch chemistry, they're very similar in a lot of ways, you know, so, you know, it's just, there's a lot of real interesting stuff there, and I really like that stuff, like their flirtation, like her terrible flirts were hilarious, I mean, Jay Garrick's like, you know, just a total badass, he doesn't give a fuck, he's just like, I need a fucking shave, or what, I don't know, he's just, he's doing his own thing, and that's all fucking cool, and he decides to stay, which is awesome, so, the possibilities of this relationship actually going somewhere, I say kudos, because I like to see that shit go down, I know there's a lot of hardcore Robbie Amell fans out there who probably don't want that to happen, and I know there is some of you out there who just don't really care for this new Caitlyn and Jay Garrick relationship, but I have to differ, I freaking love it, I think it's hilarious, I think it's entertaining, and we don't really get a lot of Caitlyn stuff, and let's just face it, freaking, the, the Ronnie Raymond, he's not gonna come back, they've already introduced, in the, if you've seen spoilers, the teasers for next week's episode, he's obviously been replaced, there's a new firestorm in town, and, you know, Robbie Mel's busy trying to make a Batman Beyond movie that's never gonna happen, so, you know what, it's just, it is what it is you just have to deal with the doubt you've been the hand that you've been dealt the cards you've been dealt if you will it's just it is what it is and i'm dealing with it i freaking like it as much as i love um ronnie raymond's um character on the show it's just something that you're gonna have to deal with and i personally like this new relationship that the writers are trying to go with i just think it's far more entertaining than just like having caitlin snow mope at, you know, Mercury, Mercury Labs or fucking Star Labs uh, all day about Ronnie and whatever, like she kind of did last season to a certain extent. So that's just my opinion. Let me know what you personally think about it, because I know there are people out there who do differ when it comes to the new relationship. But um, moving off of that, this episode alone, um, there's not really that, that I guess, besides the Jay Garrett Caitlin stuff and besides Mike Ironside's performance, the thing that stands out to me the most that really defines this episode and really is the silver lining of this episode alone has to be Joe's difficulties. His, the actor who portrays Joe West in this freaking program destroyed this episode. He fucking killed it. He was so freaking amazing. Joe has this real you know, hard decision he has to make, because, um, spoilers, but if you haven't seen last week, definitely check out that episode, and of course, check out my review, but last week, Joe's ex-wife, the mother of Iris West, who we, you know, finally have met, has come back to Central City, she wants to be more in touch, she wants to get back into Iris's life after all these years, and the way Joe kind of explains it is that Joe, uh, decided just to, uh, tell Iris that her mother died because she was a junkie and that she was a terrible mother and she left them and that's pretty much the overall gist of it and I thought that was an amazing real interesting subplot I think it was really cool how they approached that because you know all last season that's kind of like one of the things you kind of ask yourself which is where's the rest of the West family like where's the mom where's the cousins where's Wally 
What the fuck? I don't know. There's so many questions about, like, where's the rest of the West family? And I think that little tidbit of information was very awesome to hear. And the way Joe freaking, his presence, and, like, the way he just pronounced it. Like, this guy freaking destroyed it. I've been a fan of the actor for a long time now, ever since, you know, the Law & Order stuff and all the other crazy, you know, um, police uh, TV show, Mumbo Jumbo. But he fucking destroyed, he brought his A-game in this episode, and he was my favorite part. And Iris E. Even fucking destroyed and I personally last season she was like hands down my most disappoint she was and I know some people will differ me and that's okay but she for me at least my subjective opinion she was the most disappointing character of last season because from the comic book she's supposed to be so much more important than the way they per, uh, betrayed her and I feel like they have done such an amazing job at recreating what Iris really is and how she fits into this universe with this season alone and this episode was just awesome when I first saw that freaking conversation they had and she just like I and I was really I was scared because Joe he's freaking nailing it He's freaking dominating this fucking, you know, this fucking, this, these lines, and he's like about to cry, and he's freaking, he's, he's dropping it, he's dropping it, and then you, you have to have that actress who plays Iris to really deliver and be a good contrast to what he's doing, and they could have went in so many different ways that could have destroyed, like, they could have really fucked it up, you know, because they did the same thing last season where they tried to do something like this, and it didn't work out that well, you know, Iris left, you know, she was anger, angry with her dad. Barry had to come in and, like, be like, you know, he's, you know, he's still your dad and all that. You know, all that mumbo CW cheese. But this time, they dominated with it where she was just, like, she put her hand over him. And, you know, they, they, it really was a touching moment. I don't want to spoil it any, any more if I already have. However, it was an amazing moment. And hands down, for me at least, the best moment of this episode. Joe's performance, man. That performance was for me, the best performance I've seen all season alone. Uh, but that being said, that was pretty much it. The episode that's itself was kind of boring. It was actually very mundane. Nothing really exciting happened. I really didn't care about Captain Cold. I didn't really care for Golden Glider and her predicament. Uh, obviously, throughout the, the episode, you find out that apparently the only reason that uh, the Snarts were working with their father is because, I guess, he implanted a freaking bomb inside her head or something, so they had to take it out or whatever. There was there was a weird subplot amongst subplots in this episode. However, it just didn't really intrigue me. Once again, I'm not a big fan of the Golden Glider, and I'm not a big fan as to how they kind of misused Michael Ironside. Uh, but overall, Overall, it was an okay episode. The best way I can put it is that this episode of The Flash, Episode 3, Family of the Rogues, and I'm pretty sure people will differ with me with the way I'm going to pronounce it, but once again, it's my subjective opinion. This episode was the most un-superhero episode and the most CW episode. I don't know if that's a good or bad thing. I, I guess I have to leave it up to anybody who's viewing this review, but that's the way it kind of um, was really... Uh, that's how it felt to me. If there was a description, that's the description I would give to how to explain this episode. It's the most CW episode I've seen out of the Flash of this season. And at the at the end of the day, it's also the most disappointing episode of the season. Yes, the cinematics were good, the effects were decent. Um, I could I I could have done without the Golden Glider Cisco stuff. I could have done without the comedic moments with Barry trying to be a bad guy. It's like, oh, cool! I get to be a thug. It's like I could have been, I could have done without that stuff. Um, if it if this episode was just fully dedicated to that Joe and Iris stuff, oh god, this episode would have been so freaking awesome. But besides that, everything else was kind of just mundane and boring. It was just one of those episodes of the many freaking episodes CW freaking you know, accomplishes as to just being like, this is just one of those one-off episodes that's kind of like, it could go somewhere, but we're just going to leave it at that. And that's pretty much it. So, at the end of the day, if I had to give it a final verdict, i give it a good 6 out of 10. It's, for me personally, the, the most disappointing episode of the season so far. I was hoping for it to be a little bit more entertaining and, you know, a lot more, you know, crazy shit to go down, but it was kind of boring. It was a little too comedic for my taste. 
and I just didn't really care for the, you know, the Golden Glider, Captain Cold, you know, the, everything that had to deal with the rogues, I completely didn't, if, I'm just saying, the, the Iris Joe thing was the best part of this episode for me alone, but that being said, let me know what your personal thoughts are in the comment section below, with that being said, let's get into some extras that were pointed out, also, freaking Harrison Wells is back, yes, the freaking portal to Earth 2 has opened in Star Labs, ironically, Episode uh, after episode, we can already tell that there's just tons and tons of freaking metahumans that are just going to come right out of that motherfucker. However, Harrison Wells has officially come back, and he has gone through Earth 2 portal to Earth 1. Why is he come? Let me know your personal speculation and predictions for that. I don't think they're going to approach that just yet. It feels like next week is going to be a very firestorm-heavy storm episode, so I don't see, like, you know, the Harrison Wells things to have some kind of legitimacy until, like, an episode after that, maybe. But we'll have to wait and see. Um, but overall, that was really cool. I th I, I, I'm just saying, I love Tal Tom Kavanaugh. He's freaking amazing. But please don't be Zoom. Please don't be... Just be Harrison Wells. Or or be Reverse Flash. But please don't be Zoom. Please. I'm just... I'm just hoping to God. And I know a lot of people are, you know, freaking like... No, he has to be Zoom. He has to be Zoom. He needs to be the bad guy. No, please. Please. Let Zoom be his own character. And let Harrison Wells, Tom Cavanaugh be his own character. Just please give me that at least. But that being said... Really cool that he's back. Really awesome. I have no idea why, but we'll, I'm de we're obviously definitely going to be finding out in the following episodes. And uh, also, before I end this review, I wanted to quickly mention, um, yeah, the Flash cof Coffee? The Flash Latte or whatever? That's a thing. Hilarious. I, I, I wanted to mention this back in episode one, but I forgot. But I want to know people's opinion about this, about what I'm about to say. Doesn't it feel like... Flash Season 2 is like the anti-Batman v Superman Dawn of Justice. I want to know people's opinion on that because when I was watching, as I continue to watch this season, it's almost like they're trying their best not to be like the movies. I, I just find that hilarious. I mean, like, take away all the color and the fun and the lightheartedness. That's, that's a given. But throw that aside, just look at the overall seriousness and the plot of the story of what these two universes are trying to doing, it's so hilarious how different they are. I mean, like, in The Flash, the freaking singularity happens, destroys Central City, but Flash saves the day. You know what they do? They give him the key to the city, they give him a Flash day, and the guy has his own latte named after him. Awesome stuff. Amazing stuff for The Flash. Once again, Central City, they love their heroes, apparently. Regardless of any of that. Over in the movies? Fucking Metropolis gets destroyed. Superman still saves the day, but he gets shit among shit. He has to go to court. He fucking hates, you know, everyone's calling him an illegal alien. They want him dead. You know, freaking Lex Luthor got kryptonite. Batman's coming to kill him. Nobody likes Superman in the movies. It's so hilarious how The Flash Season 2 is the anti-Batman v Superman. It's like The Flash gets his own day. And Superman gets, you know, Batman fisting him in the ass. It's just hilarious how different they are. I just wanted to mention that because every time I see something like that on The Flash, it's just so funny how it's so different from the movies. It's just like, he has his own fucking coffee. He got the key to the city and they named a day after him. He's like the Goku of the fucking DC, you know, TV universe. He's just getting everything. But in the movies, it's like, superheroes, fuck them. They, nobody likes metahumans in the movies. They're like, fuck the metahumans. Superman needs to die. He's not Jesus. Fuck him. I don't know. It's just hilarious how different they are. But that being said, that's really all I can say about The Flash Season 2, Episode 3. Let me know your personal thoughts about it in the comment section below. With that being said, hope you guys enjoyed. Follow me on Twitter and Instagram, at Josh12. And of course, if you haven't done so already, subscribe to my channel. And I hope you guys enjoyed. This has been Josh12, and may the Speed Force be with you.